everyone. Happy Saturday. It is your girls, your sisters in Christ, Kai and T again on Real Gospel Talk with Kai and T. Welcome, welcome, welcome. So what are we talking about today? We are talking about one of our favorite topics in the Bible is God's will, God's calling. So that is the discussion for today. Hopefully you enjoy. Comment below. Let us know what you think about God's calling and what is his calling on your life. So we're going to jump straight into scripture. We want to lay the foundation. Foundation is always God's word. And then we'll go from there. So uh, we are going to start with Jeremiah 1.5T. Yes, ma'am. All right. Ooh. I'm a whole phone. <laughs> all right you want to read it or you want me to uh, it doesn't matter to me okay you can go ahead okay so jeremiah 1 5 states before i formed thee in the belly i knew thee and before thou came forth out of the womb i sanctified thee and i adorn adorn ordained thee a prophet unto the nations so Amen. a little background for that verse too god is speaking to jeremiah here saying he ordained him and sanctified him and set him apart for his purposes to be a prophet um, for Israel, I believe. Um, but this verse, God has shown me personally when I first got saved because of everything in my life that happened. Um, and when I felt like I was lost and when I didn't have a calling or purpose in my life, God kept showing me this verse specifically. And I know there's a lot of believers out there who would tell me I'm taking it out of context, but if God shows you something, I take that to heart, right. especially if he does it over and over again. So I prayed about it and stuff. And this scripture has been very dear to me in my walk with Christ as well. And, um, I'm sure it's very dear to other believers as well, Kai. Um, but this is going to set the foundation for God's purposes in our life because it goes to show you before God even laid the foundations of the world down, he set you apart and he knew you before you were even conceived, which like blows my mind. I know. So God was up there in heaven and just like, oh, hey, yeah, she's going to be born. She's going to be born. He's going to be born. Right. Like, like so, even before the creation. And it yeah. just boggles my mind. Like God even thought about us even back then, you know. Amen. And it shows us too, like God specifically chose us as well chose us like he like set a mark upon our lives you know like hey you're mine you're sanctified you're set apart i'm gonna use you for my purposes and for my glory and it's crazy it's crazy no so. i completely agree that's one of my favorite verses as well because it lets us know that we were we've always been important to god there's Amen. never been a time in our life, even when we felt lost, even when we felt alone, even when we felt that we weren't worthy of God's love. He loved us way before, you know, before we were born, before our parents were born, before. I mean, literally, however many generations a family can go back. He loved us before all of that. So that's right. that's really one of the most special um verses when it comes to God's calling because we're chosen. So the Amen. verse that I am going to um, pick up on and we will unpack is Ephesians 20. And this verse says, now to him who is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or think according to the power that works in us. And Amen. then 21, to him be the glory in the church of Christ Jesus to all generations forever and ever. Amen. Amen. So when you think of God's calling on your life, first off, God has a purpose for every single human that he's ever, ever created. That's your right. purpose may not look like my purpose and my purpose may not look like your purpose, but mm -hmm. all of us are here for a reason and for a purpose. And our goal in this life, once we realize that the purpose is to glorify God, to praise his name, to make disciples of the nation, to share the gospel and to stay in his will. So that's like a five point uh, purpose right. calendar or purpose plan. So when you think of all that God has in store for you, so he's already called us unto himself, mm -hmm. right? 
we love him because he first loved us. So once your eyes are actually opened and you realize, wow, you know, like the creator of everything wants a relationship with me. Not only does he want a relationship, he sent his son, his only son, to die on a cross for me. So it puts you in a place where you feel loved and you feel accepted and you feel worthy, even though you're not like our righteousness is its filthy rags. Our righteousness is only pure and clean because of the blood of Jesus. So once you know that that's your purpose, you start trying to figure out, okay, well, what can I do now for the kingdom of God? What can I do to advance the kingdom? Like, Lord, what what do you want my, what is my skill? What is my talent? What is my spiritual gift? And that's another verse that we have on our list of verses for this uh, conversation, y'all, because spiritual gifts are also part of God's calling and everyone does not have the same spiritual gift. You may want a spiritual gift, uh, you know, say prophecy. I've been praying lately like... (laughs) Like, Lord, I want to prophesy, you know, is that, can that be one of my spiritual gifts? And then I turn around and I'm like, well, Lord, maybe I don't know what I'm asking for, because to be able to prophesy, you have to see into people's lives and into their darkest moments. And I don't know if I'm ready to, you know, walk up to someone and see that they have a demon that has been tormenting them, you know, for four years and has been maybe lust or alcoholism or drug addiction uh, as the stronghold. So I prayed for the spiritual gift of prophecy and then I took it back. I was like, Lord, no, no, no. (laughs) I don't 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 think that's the one that I don't think that's the one that I want. So once we get to the spiritual gift portion of this, I'll, you know, give some more detail and I do have a verse on spiritual gifts. So everybody has to have a job, right T? I mean, you you have to work at some point. We go through seasons where we're unemployed, where we're trying to figure it out. But for me, one thing that has always been a calling and I've always been anointed to do is creativity. So whether that's photography, videography, I used to, you know, do spoken word, poetry, art, um, you know, just creating it takes it takes a lifetime for you to realize and look back retrospectively and say what is the one thing in your life that has been constant you know as far right. as the desire of your heart like what has god instilled in you what talent and skill has he instilled in you that through all of it it's like that's the one thing that I continue to do. Yeah, I took a break, but then I jumped back in. Yeah, I took a break, but then I jumped back in. So what about you? Um, So one of my callings, as I said, is creativity. So Mm -hmm. this YouTube channel that we have, it's like, this is a way for me to not only share the gospel and to talk to you and to talk to our audience um, about Jesus, but it's a way for me to use my skills that God has given me for the betterment of the kingdom. And I I thoroughly enjoy it. I enjoy, I I thoroughly enjoy making videos, producing them, editing them, uploading all the, everything that goes into it. So what about you? What one thing has been constant um, in your life that you feel like is a call from God that this is what he wants you to do in this season or overall for the kingdom? Okay. So all right, so there's a couple here. Yeah, I um, have more too, but go ahead. <laughs> okay, so first I would say um, I am a little creative as well because when I was younger, I would like to scrapbook and all that, you know, I would like to make things, you know, be artistic like you are. Um, and then I used to write a lot. I would want to be a writer, you know, so I wrote poetry as well. I try to write all these books, you know, and I try to get um, published one day. So when I was 19, I received an offer, but it was like a self-publishing thing. Mm-hmm. And the stuff I used to write was very dark, right? Like I'm talking like witch stuff, like fallen mm-hmm. angel stuff, like crazy stuff. Right. right? <laughs> so I was like, no, Lord, that's not your will for my life. You know, so when I got saved, because I would always write. But when I got saved, God kind of took that away from me. Um, but I'm so creative. You know, I love journaling. I love making stuff. Um mm-hmm that way you know what i mean 
um, they call it paper crafting, I guess, yeah. these days. I don't know, you know. So I like all the crafting, you know. I love Michaels. I love Hobby Lobby and Joann's. And I don't like Hobby so Lobby awesome. anymore now that they done took that 40% coupon away. I, I know. I have not right? been since. I know me and my husband went like a couple weeks ago and I went on his website and said, Hey, can you pull up that coupon? He's like, it's not there. I'm like, what do you mean? It's not there. They let it go hey. like six or seven months ago. I have not been back since. Is it because of COVID? <laughs> huh? Is it because of COVID? No, because they said that they wanted to be able to put more things on, on sale and they mm. couldn't do that by having the 40% coupon. And I'm like, Hobby Lobby, you you guys have messed up. Like you, I right. was a real customer and the 40%, you know, coupon really helped out because it's like, if I have a certain project I'm working on, I need a specific item. And that 40% right. coupon would help me get that item at 40% off. So yeah, I, I, I love Michael still because they still have their 40% coupon. <laughs> yeah, and Joanne's always has some good coupons too. They I range. I have Joanne's close to me. Like I have to drive oh. like thirty minutes to the closest one. So Hobby Lobby is like less than Sounds ten nice. minutes up the street from the house. But I have yeah, more we, than enough art supplies right now. Way, right, so way do more I. than I actually need. Yeah. Yeah, we have an extra room, and I put all my craft stuff in there. So I've been Same calling here. it craft room. Yep. I call it my art studio. Oh, there you go. Yeah, good one. Yeah, it's an, it's an art studio. So I know for you as well, um, from knowing you, another uh, calling that has been placed on our lives is uh, the call of service. So in addition to like, for me, um, in addition to being an artist, I also have a heart for service. Yeah. And that service can take on many different forms. Um, you know, I've been a nanny, you've been a teacher, you've been a missionary. Mm -hmm. um, I've taken care of the elderly. I'm currently taking care of the elderly. Uh, helping those that are less fortunate, whether it be homeless, uh, somebody at the grocery store that doesn't have enough money to get something. So I know um, being of service, always wanting to help, I would give my last. Uh, I donate to a lot of Christian charities. By the grace of God, I'm financially in a, a position that I can do that. And mm -hmm. sometimes, you know, one or two dollars, I donate to a lot of YouTubers. Right. When I tell you this, like, if I watch your videos and out of, like, if, if I watch one and I go on to the next one and I see that you are really sharing the gospel and doing it in a way that people can understand and you have, like, a Patreon or a Cash App or anything like that, I'm going to donate. I'm going to sign up. And what I've been doing, I do three months for each individual because there's so many organizations and people that I want to support. So if I only support you for three months, that allows for me to have other organizations that I can support for another three months. And it lets my little bit of money spread that much further, you know? So the money that we have y'all, it's not ours. I mean, yes, right. we, you know, yeah, we work for it, but everything that we have comes from God and we don't That's work right. for people. We work for God. So no matter what kind of job you have, because part of God's calling, we have to talk about careers. No matter mm -hmm. what job you have, do it like you are working for the Savior, because that's who you're working for. You're not working for the boss who may be, you know, a jerk. You are working for the Lord. So always work in whatever position. If you're a garbage man, a trash man, a janitor, a teacher, whatever the job is, do it to the glory of the Lord. So. Amen. And I, um, this verse popped in my head too, when Which you were one? talking, um, Ezekiel 36, 26, and you were, when you were talking about service and servicing others and helping others, you know, cause you're a caretaker, you know, for the elderly and everything. Mm -hmm. Um, this reminded me of this as well, because when you're a new Christian, you know, you're, you become a new creation in Christ when he saves your life. So God what he usually does is he works on you, but he takes away your stony heart and puts a heart of flesh inside of you, which, mm. which you means, said Ezekiel what? Uh, Ezekiel 36, 26. So he, he replaces all the bad stuff in your heart and gives you a new heart and he fills it with his love and compassion and empathy for others. And I think that's a big part of us serving others too, because now we can relate to them and we know that people need kindness and compassion and love, especially in this day and age. Um, and I think that's very important, mm -hmm. you know, and because my heart was never this kind or soft, you know, before I was saved, you know, I was had a very hardened heart toward people. 
So, but when God like transformed me, says he transformed me. Like my heart was like, I cry now. Like I'm I know. Every, every day, <laughs> right? It's crazy. But the verse says, um, this is Ezekiel 36, 26 guys. It says a new heart also will I give you and a new spirit will I put within you. And I will take away the stony heart out of your flesh and I will give you a heart of flesh. Amen. So, yeah, so God takes away the stony heart, the hardened heart, and gives you a new heart and a new spirit, which is his I love. I have the new King James. I read, I read the King James Version, mm -hmm. but I'm also now open to the new King James Version, um, okay. the new international version. So the new King James says, I will give you a new heart and put a new spirit within you. I will take the heart of stone out of your flesh and give you a heart of flesh. So, amen. And that's, go. I've all, and that's, you know, I don't, I don't know what happens when you're christened as a baby outside mm -hmm. of the fact that your parents are giving you back to the Lord. They're asking for the Lord to guide you in your life and protect you. Mm -hmm. So yeah. I've always, I've always had a kind heart. I mean, it was a wicked heart, but right. I always, um, there were always moments, a lot of moments where, you know, I'm helping the cat, uh, you know, trying to save the cat, trying to save the dog, mm -hmm. trying to save my friends um, and not save them from God's wrath, you know, not trying to give, give them salvation because it's not mine to give, but always trying to make sure that everybody else around me was good. Like, what do you need? You don't have food? Okay, here's some food. Right. You don't have a place to live? Here's a place to live. And I told you that story. A couple of weeks ago, you know that God used me for one of his children who was being obedient and she needed a place to live. Yes. I didn't trust God at that point in time, but she obviously did. And he was able to work in me and soften my heart for me to be able to turn around and let a complete stranger, I mean, move in with me. And I've done that three different times with three different, you know, single mothers. And this was before I knew Christ. So you Amen. did Ezekiel 36, 26. Oh, I love that. And yes. it's funny, have you ever seen the movie um, uh, The Case for Christ? Yes, I have. This is the verse that she prayed every single day for her husband until he got saved. Was it? I don't remember yes. that. Oh, yes. We have that to rewatch it. To I know it was so it. good. And Ooh, it's based it so on good. a true story, too. Speaking of God's calling, you know, basically in his will as well. You never want to jump out there and do something right, right. that is not his will. So exactly. I'm like, well, you know, I feel like the Holy Spirit is telling me that I need to go, you know, to the bars and the nightclubs and the strip club, you know, to, to, to preach the gospel. And then I go out there. That's not he hasn't given me the OK. Yes, it's, it's been right, put right. on my heart. But we didn't start this channel just out the blue. Like God right. gave us the vision to do T's testimony and when we were talking about doing her testimony we finally recorded it and towards the end of it we were like we should do this like like you should interview me or she said mm -hmm. you know I should interview you and I'm like I didn't even think about that and then I right. was like well I have all of these topics that I put in my phone and I have another YouTube channel that I'm not posting on anymore because this is my main channel now and it's like it just made sense. And we have so enjoyed making these videos. And I don't care if we post it today and nobody doesn't see it for two years. It's out there. Right. God will touch it, anoint it, and yes. that's where it needs to go. Um, but that's just another way that God calls you. He uses your talents and your skills to be able to uh, edify the people, uh, to be able to encourage his children, and to be able to... Um, share the gospel and with the internet now you know 20 years ago well 20 years would have been 2000 we had the internet in 2000 <laughs> yeah but we did. 30 40 years ago we didn't have this way of communicating to a mass amount of people all over the world and even if we did back then we wouldn't have been sharing the gospel we would have been telling people this is how you get high this is how you make a weed box this is how you make a bong. This is how you smoke and blow it. You know, like all of these sinful uh, behaviors, we would right. be promoting that. So God knows his timing is always perfect. And he waited Amen. until we were where he needed us to be, to be able to use the gifts and the, the skills that he's given us to be able to do what it is that he's called us to do. Hallelujah. 
Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, hallelujah. What was I going to say? I forgot. Oh, yeah. So, okay. So, one of my, the calling on my life that God gave me was when I first got sober and saved, mm -hmm. I asked him what to do with my life, Kai. And um, I was sitting outside of my parents' house, too. And all I heard, like, there was, like, a nice little breeze, you know. And all I heard was crisis and trauma counseling. So I went back to school and I got my degree for that. And then I've been helping others. But I've always, God has always put children in my path. Um, mm -hmm. I was an aunt since I was eight years old. You know, I was, yeah, since I was eight, I had, you know, five, five nieces, three nephews, two great nieces, and one great nephew. So I'm surrounded by kids constantly, right? Big family. <laughs> Big family. Um, so there's that. And then I was a youth leader, you know, and I worked with children at the elementary school as well. So, and now I'm about to work with, um, you know, children as well, like teenagers. So that's like, that's what God has been showing me too in service, you know, serving these people yeah. and you serve the elderly. So I wanted to say that real fast too. No, and I agree, so, you know, your testimony and I'm sure I've said this in another video, but your testimony has a purpose. You know, just yeah. like we have a purpose as, you know, citizens of heaven, children of, of the most high, your testimony, you wonder like, Lord, why did I go through all of that? You know, why did right. I why did I go through so much pain and so much suffering and so much wickedness? And then you get to a point and it's like, because I can use that for my good. So mm -hmm. same thing with you, you know, I'm able to talk to uh, a millennial or uh, whatever yes. underneath the millennials. I'm able to talk to a teenager in a way that somebody that doesn't have my testimony or my way of speaking and my way of connecting with people. I've always been a good co communicator. Like right, I, right. There, there's never been a time that I go into a grocery store and somebody doesn't stop me and share their life story with me. Like, and the mask have been amazing because it allows for me to just be able to run in and run out. But I miss that connection, you know, just talking right. about how I have a message. Before it was just like, oh, we're just going to talk about stuff, your life. But now it's like, okay, you're going through all of that. Let me share with you that there's, you know, a savior that wants to take all of that from you and in, and in its place, give you joy and peace and love and forgiveness and access to eternal life. Hallelujah. You know, so- Amen with you know in my in my church I'm one of the only people in their 40s so I teach the young adults and they have loved the Sunday school class because I'm just real and I talk right. about stuff I even showed one of my um students um a video of me from like four or five years ago and I'm like the language in this is not appropriate but I just right. want to show you because you look at me as, oh, Miss Kai is our Sunday school teacher. She's amazing. You Aww. know, she's a Christian. And I'm like, let me show you who I was before the Lord got a hold of me. And Amen. she's watching the video and she's like, Miss Kai, that doesn't even look like you. And I'm like, right. I can keep on watching. And in my language, and she's just like, you used to curse a lot. And I'm like, yes. And God still loved me. He still loves me. So I showed her that not to prove anything, you know, like, oh, yeah, I used to be this and I used to be that. It was like God didn't love me any less back then than he loves me now. Like the love Amen. didn't change, but what did change was my heart. And now, like you, all we want to do is do work for the Lord. What does that Amen. look like? Like I said, you could be a janitor, you could be a teacher, you could be a missionary, uh, you could be, you know, I can't say you could be a stripper working for the Lord, but he will put right. you out of the strip club and give you a new identity in him that doesn't involve you having to use your body to make money, but any job and any talent. So let me say this. If you have a desire of your heart as far as, well, I wonder what, what God's calling on my life is. The first thing that we would suggest is to pray. Yes. He cannot tell you what God's calling on your life is. Only God can reveal that to you. So whenever you have a question about anything, always go to God first and pray. And yes. honestly and humbly ask, you know, Lord, what do you want me to do? Because for me, people have been trying to get me in the school system for the last four years. You need to work in the school system. And I've had to sit people that I love down and say, I am not following what humans want me to do. I am waiting for the Lord to tell me where he wants me to go and what his will is. 
And I tell y'all every single time he has led me to exactly where I needed to go. And it has been a blessing for me and all part of it, you know? So pray and then really sit down with, you know, pen and paper and write down what are your skills? What are your talents? What are things that you would like to learn? What you would like to do? And then bring that list to the Lord and say, well, Lord, these are talents that you've given me. You know, I've always enjoyed... um, Uh, you know, working with animals or working with children or um, being of service. And then you say, well, these are the talents that I would like to have. So speaking of that, sis, go ahead and pull up. Let's talk about spiritual gifts before we end this. Okay. And then we'll end on that note. And I think your verse was... First Corinthians 12, 12? I believe. Hold on, let me flip my notebook over. Yeah, First, First Corinthians 13. 12, 1 through 13. Okay, I didn't write the 12 down. Hold on. And I don't think okay. it's... Do you think it's the 1 through 13 or... Yeah, because this... Um, Where's the list? On. The list of spiritual gifts. Um, Wait, hold on. Okay. Um, it starts um, actually in verse 9 for a little bit of gifts, but there's another. Um, hold on. Oh, yeah, verse yeah, verse 9. Okay. You Is there the another verse? list? Um, I Here's... see. I thought there was. Um, hold on. Okay. Verse 28 is one, two, but let me hold on, look it up because there's other ones too. We're doing good on time. We started at five four forty four, mm-hmm. and it's five thirty six. And then, of course, you know, we got stuff to cut out. That was just between us, so. Right. Hold on. Where is it? Bible verse. My mom just sent me this funny meme. Did she? Let me see She's if like, I can finally. Ha, 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 this is you. Me. It says, so it's September. Can I put my tree up yet? I know. That the Christmas. Oh, man, my pillow. Christmas is right around the corner, and I am so excited. I'm spending Christmas with my mom this year. Oh, are you? Yeah. So awesome. I'm so excited because we haven't spent the Christmas in a couple of years. So I'm right. really excited. Let me make sure this is good before I fall. Hold on. Okay. Where are all the gifts? Jesus, help us. Let me see. I'm just sitting here letting you look for it. Let me open my life, my Bible. Because <laughs> I know there's a longer list, but those right. are some of the basics. Um, prophecy. Oh, Romans. Hold on. Is it Romans? I think it's Romans 12. Hold on. Or is that the one you just... Is that the one you said, Romans? Oh, six through eight. <clears throat> and y'all, while we look for these verses, um, always have a physical Bible. Yes. There's nothing wrong with having, you know, the um, app-based Bible, but there's just something about holding the living word of God in your hand and being able to flip to the back and go through the concordance. Um, the Romans verses start in, uh, chapter 12 starts in verse six, but I don't think that's a list we're looking for. Let me see. Hold on. Okay, here they are. I don't know where they are in the Bible, but let me see. Okay. Um, prophecy, gifts of healing, word of knowledge, yeah, yeah. word of wisdom, discernment of spirit, speaking in tongues, and gift of, gifts of miracle. Yeah, that's, uh, I got that list too. First Corinthians 12, um, 
8 through 10. Okay, so you want to go ahead and read 8 through 10. Let me pause it. So then okay. when it comes back on, I know that that's what it is. Pause. Okay. So what are the spiritual gifts, Chief? And okay, what so verse is it? 1 Corinthians 12 starts in verse um, 8, I want to say. It says, for to one is given by the spirit, the word of wisdom, to another, the word of knowledge by the same spirit, which is a Holy Spirit, guys, um, to another, faith by the same spirit, to another, gifts of healing by the same spirit, to another, the working of miracles, to another, prophecy, to another, discerning of spirits, to another, um, diverse kinds of tongues, to another, the interpretation of tongues. But all these work it that one in the self same spirit dividing to every man severally as he will. Amen. So, amen. So you got wisdom, you got knowledge, you have healing, you have working of miracles, prophecy, discerning of experiments, what or spirits, not experiments, guys. Sorry. <laughs> so I call that. So we call that um, the gift of discernment usually. Mm -hmm. Um. Katung. No, we'll go ahead and um and end this video. Uh, to the audience, hopefully you have been blessed by the video and the topic. Once again, God has a calling for your life. God has a purpose for your life, and yeah, it's yeah. just a matter of you talking to the Lord to find out what is that purpose outside of glorifying Him and you know sharing the gospel. But what skills has He given you that you can use? Um, to um, to build the kingdom of God for the future. Uh, be blessed. Thank you for watching. And make sure that you trust God. If you don't know God, there's still an opportunity to. All you have to yes. do is A, B, C. Accept that Jesus, or well, let me rephrase that. Let me pause. Let me chew this. I've been eating this candy for like an hour. <laughs> okay. <laughs> So if you don't know Jesus Christ, there is still the opportunity to do so because you are still breathing. So Amen. salvation is very simple. We'll do the ABC method. A is admit that you are a sinner. I'm mm -hmm. a sinner. You're a sinner. We've all lied, cheated, stolen, fornicated, cheated, stole. Like we've all sinned and come, in sh yes. come short of the glory of God. Right, T? So you yep. have to first A, accept and admit that you are a sinner. B, yes. you have to believe. You have to believe that Jesus Christ is the son of God, the only begotten son, God in the flesh, incarnate, came to earth, born of a virgin, died on the cross for our sins, rose on the third day, is now in heaven as our intercessor on the right hand of God. That's B. C is you have to confess. Confess that, Lord, I need you. I cannot do this on my own. I don't want to be out here and not be saved and have to bear my sins for myself. So once you do that with an open and humble heart, you are now a believer of Jesus Christ. And it's so easy. Like, that, that's, that wasn't hard at all. If you mean it with your heart, you are now saved. And Jesus will come into your heart, give you the Holy Spirit, and you will have joy and love and peace and forgiveness. And you will have a million brothers and sisters in Christ who love you and want nothing but the best for you. So thanks for watching. We love you with all the love of Jesus. And stay tuned for more videos. Be sure to subscribe, hit the notification bell, and comment below. We'd love to hear your thoughts on this video. Bye.